Welcome back to the next Bouncy Boy devlog. This time we're going to look at my level builder tool, which uses custom editor scripting. Writing custom editor tools has become an essential part of my development. If you're a developer and aren't already making your own tools, I strongly urge you to give it a crack. Come on, do it, do it! So, why should we write custom editor tools? Well, one use could be to keep the inspector nice and clean. Take for example this inspector for a pool manager tool I wrote a while back. Versus what it would look like without the custom inspector. You can see how much control you have over customising the inspector here. Creating editor tools isn't just limited to the inspector. You can create your own pop-out windows to edit all instances of a type of scriptable object for example or even scene view helpers to help you with world building, which is exactly what I've done with Bouncy Boy. For my game Bouncy Boy, I realised early on that placing tile prefabs down for every single tile and decorating it was going to be an absolute nightmare. No, no, no! So it was an absolute no-brainer. Create an editor tool to get the job done faster. My game board consists of a grid of tiles, and each tile is constructed as follows. It has prefabs for the top and bottom, then decorations for the top and bottom parts. As you can see, this would get very time consuming to do this all by hand. Now with the builder tool, it's so easy to create my level layouts. First, I set the tile set for the prefabs to use. Then create the game board, if there's not one already. And now you can see a box handle for everywhere that a tile can be placed. I can edit that tile just by clicking onto that little box. And this is where all the magic happens. I can now choose what pieces to use for this tile, as well as set some information over here with the tile inspector. Having this inspector here in the window saves so much time. I won't go over this tool script because well, it's kind of lengthy. Creating your own editor scripts isn't as scary as it might sound. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of misinformation out on the net about how to write your own inspectors and editors by casting the object. Here's a simple example of how not to do it. While this may work, it will probably lead to problems down the line and you can't access private serialized properties which makes you then set all of the variables public and they don't really need to be. Instead, we'll use the serialized property because Unity has already done all the heavy lifting for us. This example isn't going to be mind blowing or anything but hopefully it will show you how easy it is to make your own tools. First, we create the inspector script and override the onspector GUI method. Then, get access to a serialized property on the object we're trying to view in the inspector. Next, we draw it to the inspector using default drawer for that object type. Note you can also create your own custom property drawers uh, to fully customize what the object looks like, but this does get a bit more complicated. Lastly, we apply any changed properties. Doing it this way will also add changes to the undo stack. Now let's look at our inspector, and it looks pretty much the exact same. So let's go back to the editor script and make it pretty with some layout code. Ah, much better. While this example isn't really a real world use, knowing how to do this is invaluable. And not to mention, makes you much more employable. Now back to Bouncy Boy, let's have a look at one of the levels in the game. Bouncy Boy's gameplay is all turn-based. Everything will react when the player moves. 
An event is fired off once the player moves and anything listening will act accordingly. The other types of interaction is trigger based. These triggers are fired off on tile enter, on tile exit and on tile interact. Most of these events are using the Unity event solution, however also use the classic observer pattern with C-sharp events. So let's see what's happening in this level. The goal here is obviously to open the gate, however both doors need to be opened to be allowed through to the finish. The catch is, the purple flower has a counter, and when the player moves a certain number of moves, it will reset the gate puzzle, as we saw in that example. There's also uh, a tile here which triggers the vines to grow, blocking the player and forcing them to spend more moves to get to the finish. This is more of for the gold medal hunters who want to get uh, a gold medal for each level. So the solution here is to action the orange flower first, then the purple. This way the counter won't reach the limit by the time that the door shuts. Designing levels for Bouncy Boy definitely requires testing from other people because as you, the designer, you know exactly how to solve it. So the perceived difficulty is vastly different to the actual difficulty of the puzzle. I really love watching people play this level, just purely for this reason alone. This also needs to be met with balance. Like in music and movies, it's all about valleys and peaks. If the ch challenge is always turned up to 11, then it's just considered the average. The player needs to be able to test and measure against another level. This is also true for the player emotion and game feel. If there was a camera shake effect on every single action in the game, it just wouldn't feel as impactful. So that's all for this devlog. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone and all of these new subscribers and viewers. I totally wasn't expecting to hit those numbers that I did. It's so encouraging. So if you haven't already, come say hi on the Discord server. There you can chat to other bouncers, share your thoughts and ideas, as well as see new game content as it's being created. Also jump on that wishlist bandwagon. I know it's so cliche to ask, but it really does help the old Steam algorithm to show it on the Steam page. Lastly, let me know what you want to see more of. Do you like seeing the technical side of things, or do you want to just see more of the game and the art being built? I'll throw up a poll in the community section of the channel so you guys can decide what the next vlog will be based on. Cheers and thank you for watching.